for Trinidad. Sorry about that buzz on the sound. It was due to the satellite. At the close of play, 144 for no wicket was Tony Francis. They'd come expecting a St. Valentine's Day massacre by the West Indies batsmen, but they'd reckoned without John Embury. He'd put a spell on Gordon Greenwich. Botham swallowed it, and the game changed course. Desmond Haynes had been choked in the 90s when Embury swooped for his second wicket. A magnificent catch, and England were right back in the game. There was absolutely no point letting it ruin your lunch, of course. But also hungry was John Embury, and when Mattis came in, he had him eaten up by Gooch around the corner. It had been a tremendous fight back by England, but there was still Viv Richards, and he wasn't going to be pinned down by anyone. Before he could inflict too much damage, though, Miller lured him into a trap. Gower had been positioned square for that very shot, and Richards was gone for 29. So Botham had outthought them. Could he now finish them off? Cue Chris Old with the new ball and enough deviation to dislodge the stubborn Larry Gomes. 257 for five, and that left the West Indies captain, Clive Lloyd, the last of the recognised batsmen. 36 he may be, but he averaged 172 in the domestic shell shield, and one could quite understand why. Even John Embury incognito didn't fool him. But the sun-ravaged Embury wasn't through yet. Murray, on 46, fell to a brilliant running catch by Botham. And fittingly, it was Embury who ended Lloyd's innings near the close. He'd made 64, but the day belonged to the England spinner. Tony Francis, ITN Sport, Trinidad. And a close of play, the West Indies... But down to the West Indies score of 400...